I've finished with track one, so turning off record enable also turns off monitoring for that track. Select track two and press the MIDI button. Record enable and monitoring is automatically turned on as well. I'm going to be using the zebra synth on this track, so I'll name the track zebra and give it a color. You can, of course, set up a template that has all the track colors pre-selected, so it's not necessary to go through this every time. Right click on click to open the metronome options. I need to change the click to pre-count clicks only and also disable active while playback. I'll disable loop as I only need to do one pass for this take. Click where it says MIDI out and new instrument Zebra Zebra 2. Zebra lets you change the window size which is nice. From the presets I'm going to use a sound called Outer Temple. Sounds suitably cosmic. Double clicking on the MIDI object opens the piano roll. Clicking on PB opens the controller lane for pitch bend, so you can edit the pitch bend data if you desire. Above that you can edit velocity or any other controller data. This gives me a chance to show you how to freeze a MIDI track. Left click on the small downward arrow next to Zebra and select Freeze Track. It's now replaced by a wave object. The new wave object is slightly longer to accommodate the delay tail. If you decide you need to edit the MIDI, just go to the same menu again and select Unfreeze Track. You can then do your editing in the MIDI editor, or maybe you want to change the sound or experiment with a different VSTi. Then it's just a matter of freezing it again when you're finished, so it all works pretty seamlessly. It's worth noting that if you right click on the volume fader, there's a list of fader settings for MIDI tracks. As an example, if you're using an external MIDI synthesizer for that track, you can set the fader to control MIDI volume. Although if you're not using external gear, it's best to leave it set to control audio track volume. So if you find the fader isn't affecting the volume, it's worth checking these settings. Also, if you press Y and go to MIDI, it's possible to set the default to Don't Change Volume Fader Mode. My motto would be, if in doubt, right click. Although this template has 16 tracks, I don't really need them all at the moment. Also, I don't need them all displayed in the mixer either. Anyway, it's easy to hide tracks and mixer channels from view. Press the Manager button and click on the Tracks tab. I can then shift left click and select the tracks I want to hide and then untick the checkboxes in the arrangement column. This can also be done for the mixer channels. So now the VIP has just eight tracks showing and so has the mixer. Naturally you can reverse the process in the track manager at any time. The manager may look rather unassuming but it does pack a lot of punch but this will be covered in greater detail in another tutorial. One thing I want to do though is set up an auxiliary bus to demonstrate the FX sends. You can add any class of track by going to the menu item Track Insert New Tracks. You can do the same by left clicking in this empty area. I'll add one from here. Of course, the Track Manager does this as well. Right click and choose from the list. I may as well add one more auxiliary for good measure. 
The most comprehensive method for adding or removing multiple tracks, auxiliary and submix buses is to press Ctrl Shift M to open the project mixer setup window. Within this window you can freely add or remove any class of track. This is particularly useful if you are creating a new project template from scratch. You can then save the configuration as a preset. So, as is usual in Samplitude, there are several ways to skin a cat. No offence intended to cat lovers, of course. Up until now, I've concentrated on the VIP as the main work area, but of course the mixer can also accomplish many of these tasks and more. Clicking on the Mixer tab opens the mixer. You can also go directly to the mixer setup by pressing this button. Plus you have fast access to the saved setups here. If you're short of screen space, you can collapse different sections of the mixer by clicking on these arrows. So, I will add a Variverb to the first plug-in slot of the AUX channel, and choose one of the AUX presets. Solo the drum channel. Pressing this button starts playback. So now I can add some reverb to the drums by turning up the auxiliary send from the drum mixer channel. The Variverb now shows up in the plugin slot in the track editor as well. The auxiliary send can also be adjusted via the track editor. If you want to conserve space, the track editor can be hidden by pressing the track editor button. To conserve even more space, you can press the tab key so that only objects are displayed. Before making your first audio recording, it's advisable to open the record options window. This can be accessed from the play record menu. It can also be found by right-clicking on the record button. You can then choose the file format you want to record in. You're not just limited to WAV files as you can see. MP3, OGVORBIS, FLAC. Record mode lets you choose the bit rate and to the right the sample rate. Playback while recording, create VIP object and update object while recording should all be checked or you won't see or hear anything when recording. You can set the record path and file name by clicking on the folder icon. Also specify a name for the takes, base in my case. The extended options are worth checking out as well. Normally each take is appended to the same WAV file, but in some cases you may want to create a new file for each take, so ticking each record take in a new file will do this. If you want to enable or disable the record confirmation that pops up after recording, you can do it here. Another useful one is defining whether the play cursor returns to the beginning or stays at the end of an object when you've stopped recording. The default places the cursor back to the beginning of the take. If you want the cursor to remain at the end of the last recorded object, you can check this box. Moving down to the playback tab. Again, the default for the play cursor playback behavior is to return to the play start. Stop at position will leave the play cursor at the current position when playback is stopped. Right-clicking on the Transport Play button also opens the playback options.